Step one, we're going to prove that f of one is divisible by five. So one to the power five plus four times one is one plus four, which is five, which when divisible, which when divided by five gives five, gives one. Therefore, true for n equals one. Step two, we're going to assume that k to the power 5 plus 4 times k is divisible by 5. And we're now going to try and use that fact to show that k plus 1 to the power 5 plus 4 times k plus 1 is also divisible by 5. So expanding these brackets, expanding the k plus 1 to the power 5 will be k to the power 5 plus 5k to the power 4 plus 10k cubed plus 10k squared plus 5k plus 1. So this is the same thing as this. I've just expanded that out using the binomial theorem. Plus, we've got the 4k plus 4 from the second bracket. Collecting up those like terms. Um, in fact, no, I'm not going to collect up those like terms. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just reorder this slightly. So I'm going to write the k to the power 5 plus the 4k at the front. And then I'm going to write all of these other terms afterwards. And notice I've got the 1 and the 4 as well, that I will collect those together to get a 5. Because now, the reason I've decided to write them, write it like this is that this was my assumption. So I know, I've assumed that that part is divisible by 5. And then all of these have got a common factor of 5, so I can factorise that out. So, this part is divisible by 5 by our assumption. This part here has clearly got a common factor of 5, so this is divisible also by 5. Therefore, if k to the power 5 plus 4k is divisible by 5, then also k plus 1 to the power 5 plus 4k plus 1 is also divisible by 5. We have shown in step one that it is divisible by five when n is one. Therefore, it is always divisible by five for all positive integers. So that's part A of this question done. Make sure you've got all of that copied down if you haven't yet, because 
I'm going to clear my screen to give me some space for part B and C. So part B says to show that f of minus x is equal to minus f of x for all x being natural numbers. So if I substitute minus x into our rule, I will get minus x to the power 5 plus 4 times minus x. Now, minus x to an odd power will be the same thing as minus x to the power 5. And the 4 times minus x is minus 4x. Which I can factorise that minus outside. Like so. And that left, that right hand side there, you can see the x to the power 5 plus 4 lots of x is f of x. And so we have shown that f of minus x is equal to minus f of x. And part C says, hence prove that f of n is divisible by 5 for all n being integers. So in part A, we showed, so part A showed f of n is divisible by 5 for all positive integers. Part B shows that for negative integers, f of minus n is equal to minus f of n. And that minus won't change the fact that it was divisible by 5 from part a. So therefore, also divisible by 5 for negative integers. So we've shown it's definitely true for all positive integers, and we've also shown that that means then that it's also going to be true for negative integers. The only other integer we've not talked about yet is zero. So we need to show that it's true for zero. And I think just substituting zero into our function, zero to the power of five plus four times zero is zero which is divisible by 5. Therefore, divisible by 5 for all integers, positive, negative, and 0.